We have Kamna Pandey, who is also an animal rights activist. Ms. Pandey, thank you so much for joining us here on Mira Now. What I wanted to ask you is a more specific answer for where in a situation where one is surrounded by dogs, either strays or pet dogs, what is one supposed to do in a situation like that? Okay, so uh, in a situation where you're surrounded by community dogs, we don't call them strays, uh, in a situation where you're surrounded by community dogs, it's a different response. With a pet dog, it's a different, they're completely, their behavior is completely different. Uh, a pet dog is known to be very uh, defensive about his uh, pet parent. So w one thing that you must never do is that you must never confront a pet parent or an owner with an aggressive stance. You know, uh, the pet dog is bound to act defensive and that's his job. So once he perceives threat towards mm -hmm. the owner, he's going to uh, be aggressive and there um, it's a recipe for uh, a mishap. So that's something, even if you have a lot of RWA Of course, it's also important to seen, note that that's not for all pets either. Most pets, most pets. And the dog, if you're going to confront, you have mm. a stick in hand, you're going to uh, approach towards, the. Uh, you're going to walk towards the owner. The dog is there. The dog is going to, in almost all cases, the dog is bound to uh, protect his owner. Okay, so that's something that in RWAs, let's say if you have some something to say to the owner, be it regarding the dog, be it regarding anything else, you must let the owner go and drop his dog back into his apartment and then come down to talk to uh, the people or you go approach him later, not at the point when he has the leash of the dog in hand. Number one, this is some, we have a lot of cases where people mm -hmm. have approached and then the dog is attacked. So I'll, I'll give you five categories where uh, these situations happen, especially with pet dogs. One is uh, a case of willful trained aggression where you get your dog trained to be aggressive because you like your dog to be ferocious. It's a status symbol, whatever. That's something that we do not support. We do not uh, agree to it. That's a, a, wrong, a wrong thing to do as a pet parent. Second is where the aggression comes in a dog due to pet abuse, where the pet parent is abusing the uh, pet, keeping it tight for long hours, uh, beats him up and all of that. The dog is uh, gets aggressive in that case. In the cases uh, where these cases are reported to us, we rescue the dog, we confiscate the dog, but then the uh, owner just goes and buys another dog and gets it back. There is nothing that is preventing him as of now to uh, go and get another dog unless the court, uh, the case goes, uh, goes to the court. The third is a defensive aggression, situational defensive aggression, where I told you like confronting a pet owner with a threatening stance in presence of his dog or when you enter a house. Uh, where the dog is there, that's his territory. If the dog uh, feels you're a threat and he has to protect that area, he can get aggressive. That's the third one. Then it is carelessness. A lot of times, the cases that are reported, 99% of the times, it is the pet parent's uh, sheer carelessness. You won't leave your four-year-old human child on the road unattended, unsupervised. There's no reason why you should leave your Absolutely. pet dog Now, bouncing off of that, Ms. Pandey, what I wanted to ask you about is what can people who have pets do to be responsible owners and decrease incidents like this? Because you were just talking about ca the carelessness of pet parents. One is, of yes. course, leashing the pets, ensuring that they are not left out in the open. What else can, can uh, pet owners do? The uh, most pet parents where they are parents and not owners, uh, 
they do take care of uh, they know the temp like how she said uh, that you know the temperament of your uh, child right you know the temperament of your pet child if you think he's temperamental you will always be careful if somebody is approaching you will tell them nee nee pass mat aana ye kaatta hai all of that usually everybody does in some cases where there is sheer carelessness and you you uh, i it's very difficult to even say why they would do something like this they get some sort of sadistic pleasures uh, they even leave their they take their dog uh, uh, on the walk and they'll unleash them and they let them loose on the community dogs where they are uh, incited to attack on the community dogs and then sometimes uh, while they are attacking the community dogs or the feeders uh, sometimes they also tend to bite other people who are nowhere in the scene as in you know the the uh, dog versus the community dog scene however they just happen to fall in the way and they get bitten this i think a uh, strict action must be taken as per law and the law that is made is actually for these parents because they not only harm their dog they not only harm the person, the victim who's bitten they also harm the other you know the entire community of pet parents where everybody is sort of looked at uh, with that uh, you know same suspicion the love for dogs is lost there is fear that replaces it everybody gets scared the moment you look at a dog you are scared that's not how it was in our days but that's how it is becoming now because only these cases are highlighted and then everybody gets scared another very important point where i think media plays a very important role is that we need to balance it out like how she uh, um, said that there needs to be a balance we only if we only keep highlighting these cases without uh clarifying that these are a few cases case, these cases must be dealt with very sternly in fact in my opinion the dogs need to be immediately Absolutely. confiscated if there is a case of sheer carelessness 